Welcome to the Parish Church of St. Luke online for this, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. As we come before God, we offer prayer. Let us pray. O God of the universe, O Lord of life, give us grace to see you in all your works, in all creatures, all people, and in our hearts that we may faithfully serve you and worthily praise your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
us pray. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then Will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O oh, Jacob, and speak, O oh, Israel. My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. We'll share in praying Psalm 147 by responding at the half verse. O oh, praise the Lord, for it is a good thing to sing praises unto our God. Yea, a joyful and pleasant thing it is to be the Lord doth build up Jerusalem and gather together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth those that are broken in heart and giveth medicine to heal their sickness. He telleth the number of the stars and calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and great is his power. Yea, and his wisdom is infinite. The Lord setteth up the meek and bringeth the ungodly O sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises upon the harp unto our God. He covereth up the heavens with clouds and prepareth rain for the earth. And maketh the grass to grow upon the mountains and earth for the use of men. Who giveth fodder unto the cattle and feedeth the young ravens that call upon him. He hath no pleasure in the strength of an horse. Neither delight he in any man's legs. But the Lord's delight is in them that fear him. And put their trust in his mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as to not make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I might become weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some, I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up, and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May only the truth be spoken here, and may only truth be received here. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. The kingdom has come because the Messiah has come. This is important because it's hard for us to imagine the darkness and the difficulty of living for the people in the first century in Jesus' time. The Romans were there. The uh, people of Israel uh, were under Roman occupation. Um, There was no health care. Uh, life was very fragile in, in those days. And Jesus comes on the scene and he proclaims the good news of the coming of God's kingdom. You know, the kingdom of heaven is among you. And that is good news. 
And the kingdom is here because the Messiah is here. Jesus has given his Holy Spirit to the church to be with us forever, to guide us and encourage us and to strengthen us in our ministry. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And for us uh, during this time, and it's been very difficult over the last uh, 10 or so months for, for most of us and many of us, experiencing isolation and disruption and change and difficulty with finances and everything taking a lot longer to do and being careful when we're out shopping. It's been a real disruption and it's felt like we are in some kind of an exile, even in our own homes. And so God sends messengers to us in times of great difficulty. The reading from Isaiah was for a people who were in exile. God sends Isaiah to the people and says, Comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Let her know that she has served her term. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And so this is the message to the people of Israel who have been taken into exile in Babylon. And the reading that was so beautifully read today says this. Have you not known? Have you not seen? Has it not been told from you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? God is here. God is with you. And God will carry you through this very dark time. And God fulfilled God's promise. And the people returned. Now, think back to the people of South Africa, the African people who were oppressed during the apartheid regime and how long it took for them to be freed of oppression or how long it took for slaves of any kind to be freed. It's a many generations long project sometimes. And this pandemic will pass. So for people who walk in darkness, they need hope. We need this message that the kingdom has come because the Messiah has come. We need that message. We need to hear it. And we need to know that despite all of these disruptions in our lives, God will help us to get through this time. So if you think of all of the disruptions, um, particularly here at St. Luke's, one of the, the big things for us is that you know, part of our identity as a community of faith is serving those who are, are vulnerable and those who are in need. And for a variety of reasons, we've not been able to do that the way we used to do that. So there's been disruption in our ministry, our ministry of serving. This congregation wants to serve and care for people. Just the other day, I had an email from someone saying, I want to drop off some food. Can I do it? Well, it's very difficult. We can't serve people the way we used to. And personally, what I'm finding very difficult is that my gifts are mostly pastoral and I want to be able to visit people when they're dying. That was part of my gift, to be with people during their last days. And so I can't visit the palliative care wards. I can't go to the hospital right now. Um, I'm allowed to go to the hospital only for prayers for the dying, and that's it. One visit only. We're not visiting in our friends in, our, in personal care homes. We're not visiting our friends in assisted living residences. Um, our ministry to children has basically been stopped by the pandemic. Um, and uh, for me personal, this is, personally, this has been very difficult. I want to be with people, and yet I cannot be with people. Um, so despite this, you know, despite this disruption in our vocation, God will restore your vocation. 
God will renew your identity as uh, a member of the body of Christ and as a child of God. God is in the process of helping us to deal with that. God is with us. Therefore, we expect and we live in hope. It's not optimism. It's in very critically um, tutored understanding of what their present reality is and how we need to move through it. The kingdom has come because the Messiah has come. And Isaiah's message of hope is something that resonates with each and every one of us. Uh, God was with the people of Israel, even in their exile. It's hard to imagine being led captive to an entirely different country and trying to retain your culture and your identity. For the gospel, uh, which was read uh, so well today, there is a restoration of vocation. I want to focus particularly on the story of uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. There are two um, restoration healing events on that Sabbath day. One was the reading from last week in which an unclean spirit is cast out of uh, a man at the synagogue and uh, Jesus silences that uh, spirit. You know, the spirit says, have you come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God, and Jesus silences him. Um, in the story of uh, Simon, uh, Simon and Andrew bring Jesus. J James and John are there with them. The community of faith is beginning to grow and uh, the church is being formed. And Jesus goes and visits uh, Simon's mother-in-law. She did not go to synagogue. She, was, she had a terrible fever. And in those days, a fever, an infection of, of any kind, uh, we're very blessed to have modern medicine and penicillin and all of those antibiotics. Um, and they're working on other uh, methods of healing infections. But that was a death sentence for many people. Uh, many women died of childbirth, for instance. So Simon's mother-in-law, we don't know her name. She has a fever and Jesus comes and he heals her. But the text is very interesting because the translation we had today says that Jesus lifted her up. Uh, the, the verb in the original is really, he raised her up. It's the same verb referring to uh, Jesus being raised from the dead. So we have an echo of the resurrection to come. Uh, it's pointing forward to uh, the resurrection. It's a restoration. And what does she do? It's, she gets up and she serves them. It's the same word where the holy angels came and served Jesus when he was being tempted in the desert. Diakonia. She served them. And so that was her, that was her vocation. That's, that was the way she ruled. That was the way how she lived. She wanted to be able to continue um, caring for people. That was her vocation. It wasn't just um, sort of the menial things that women did in those days. Uh, Jesus restored her. Why? So that she could live out um, her gifts as a disciple. So this is very important for us because as, as Christians living through this pandemic, uh, we look forward to the time when our vocations are going to be restored. Um, in this pandemic, there have been a lot of positive things that have come out of it. We need to look only at a couple of the ways that we've had to um, change the way that we live and serve as church during the, the, the pandemic. Um, Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve. And that is, um, that too is our identity as disciples who serve. 
There are other um, healing stories um, that are included in in today's gospel reading. Um, it's interesting that in most of the, the the healings that happen, the people come to Jesus. Jesus um, is like um, a magnet bringing uh, people in. People hear that uh, he's healing people. Just imagine uh, what would happen if people knew, hey, you know, at St. Luke's, they're giving away the vaccine. And there would be lots and lots of people gathered around the church, lining up to get the vaccine right away. And this is what happened uh, with Jesus. So he heals uh, Simon's mother-in-law. And um, that evening at sundown, so after the Sabbath, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. Think about that. Um, people came to Jesus and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Part of what's going on here is that Jesus is, while he's prepared to go public, he is not prepared to live into the identity of what people expected of a king of Israel. He came to be a very different kind of king. And if people were calling him king, then it would be considered a direct threat to the Roman authorities. Because there's really only one king and he's in Rome, right? The king in Jerusalem was really a puppet king, uh, put there to help keep the people of, of Israel under control. And they were... They colluded with the Roman authorities. And Jesus does not want to enter into that kind of a direct fight with them, especially at this time. And if you want to know why Jesus was killed, you think, gee, look at all the great things that he was doing. Why did they kill him? It was because he was, his, it was a direct threat to, uh, to the imperium that he would be, uh, that he would be a king. And that's what people were afraid of. So, in the morning while it was still dark, he left and went to a quiet place. And that's when there's this pattern of Jesus' public ministry and private ministry where he is being renewed by the Holy Spirit. We need that time. Uh, this pandemic can be a time for us to um, renew our relationship with God, just as Jesus spent time with God. You know, when the disciples found him, they said, everybody's looking for you. And surprisingly, this is what he said, okay, let's go to a neighboring town, to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. That is his primary focus, is to proclaim the message that God's kingdom has come. God's kingdom has come because the Messiah has come. God's kingdom is present with us now because the Messiah is with us now through the Holy Spirit and you need to hold on to that. It's a wonderful gift that God has given to us. So, God is with you and God strengthens you for your ministry and despite this disruption, God will restore your vocation, just as God uh, restored the vocation of Simon's mother-in-law, who was ill, just as God restored the lives of all of those people through his healing touch and his care and his love. So Jesus demonstrated the kingdom that he proclaimed by living it out as an agent of love. And that's what we are called to do. So consider all of the ways that you have adapted over the last many months. Um, how has God touched your life and brought you signs of hope? That's what I want you to think of this week and pray about during this week. Um, one of the ways that God has helped us, of course, is through this online ministry. We wouldn't, we would have just carried on if it weren't for the pandemic. And now we are reaching even more people 
and caring for even more people through this online ministry. The kingdom of God is like a woman who takes a ball of yarn and unrolls it and gets her knitting needles and she knits and she knits and every stitch is a prayer and she knits and she knits and she knits and there's a beautiful prayer shawl and then a friend comes and picks it up and the shawl is blessed by the community, by the priest, and then the shawl goes out to one friend who brings it to another friend who mails it to a friend in England so that that person knows that they are loved and cared for and that there are more people who love and care for you than you than you know remember that we love you you're precious uh, one of the things that we've had to do here at st. Luke's was to build a phone tree and to have we have over 40 I think it's 45 people who are calling other members of the church and if you would like a phone call, connect with our church. We would love to connect with you. And we would like to build you up and help you in your circumstances, whatever they are. The kingdom has come because the Messiah has come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in all God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Pray with me, responding, renew our strength. Light of the world, as we near the end of the season of Epiphany, reveal to us your message of love and forgiveness. We are thankful for so many things, the delight of humor, a song that lifts our heart, bright sunshine glittering on snow, guide us to honor this beautiful earth. As we live and work in Treaty 1 territory, and as we take in life-giving water from the territory of Treaty 3, we give thanks to you, our divine creator. Lord, renew our strength. Bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and for those who govern in her name. For leadership in government, direct us to hold to account those in positions of responsibility and authority. We remember people living in areas of civil unrest and refugees the world over. Move us to speak out for the good of all. Lord, renew our strength. All-knowing God, you bring us the Holy Spirit, our comforter, to be with us when we are facing an uncertain future, in the nights of our isolation of worry, when the world is asleep and we feel there is no one to hear us. Sustain us while we wait patiently through this pandemic, as patiently as we can, for some of our cherished activities to resume to see friends and family in person, rather than just virtually, on a screen. For those in the arts who have had their work severely curtailed by necessary restrictions on gatherings, support them so that they may one day again share 
and promote their God-given gifts and talents. Lord, renew our strength. Almighty God, there are many places and spaces of need and desperation, food insecurity, the grind of unemployment and underemployment, threats to mental health, unsafe situations. Lift up those who have access to remedies for these problems, that they will bring forth from our land of plenty those supplies and opportunities that will provide a haven and daily bread for all. Lord, renew our strength. Help and protect those working to provide care. We rely on so many people to work with integrity and diligence on our behalf. Those in health care, the justice system, food and supply chains, our social safety net, in wonder, we marvel at the natural world, the discoveries of science and medicine, and most recently, the protection we look for from the range of vaccines for COVID-19. Lord, renew our strength. Merciful Lord, it is painful for us to realize the part that our society has played in perpetuating injustice. Only by learning about the past can we understand, and by understanding can we move forward to make positive changes. February gives us a learning opportunity with Black History Month. Here in Manitoba, the 94 Calls to Action from the 2015 Truth and Reconciliation Commission are followed by the 231 calls for justice from the 2019 National Inquiry into Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women and Girls. These recommendations can lead us away from the long-standing burdens of oppression. These inequities keep all people, those oppressed and those privileged, from living what Jesus commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Let us give thanks for being alive at a time when light is being shone into dark corners. We do not have to be trapped in or continue to play a part in an unfair world. Lord, renew our strength. Wise counselor, be with those suffering with physical or mental illness, addiction, separation from family or loved ones. Deliver healing to them. Take away their pain and discomfort. Quiet their fears. For those on our parish prayer list, be with each of those listed in whatever way is required. For those feeling discouraged, we think of your promise of love and forgiveness so we can resolve to start over, to try again in spite of failure. COVID-19 is one of many ailments that interfere with people being well and living in the way they would like. When circumstances have changed, send patience and wisdom to adapt. Lord, renew our strength. For those who have had recent losses, we ask that you, our compassionate God, walk with them. Put your loving arms around them and wrap them with tenderness to soothe the raw edge of grief. Rest eternal grant to all those departed this life, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Liberator of our spirit, remind us that you are with us always, whenever we let you into our hearts and minds. You bring us hope that we are not alone and that we can go forward. Your forgiveness is steadfast. Focus us to be a spark of light in the darkness. Lord, renew our strength. 
In the name of our divine creator, our blessed savior, and our most loving counselor, amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. pray. God of compassion and forgiveness, receive our offering this day and make us one with him 
who is our peace, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as, as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross. He might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish all the darkness of sin and despair. By his re resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, he took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, he took the cup and saying, this is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who dare, all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being living are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks.
Let us pray. Eternal God, in you we find peace beyond all telling. May we who share in this heavenly banquet be instruments of your peace on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.